Okay, the tools panel has lots of tools on it, and so I've identified them on the screen here. I'm not expecting you to memorize all of these tools right now, and depending on what version of InDesign, you might have the tools in a different order. So I'm just going to pull out a few key ones that you're going to use in the first few weeks of the semester. Um, right at the top, so I've, first of all, I don't have the long skinny tools panel. I kind of made it short and squatty so it's easier to see. But right at the top, we have two uh, cursors or what look like a mouse icon and so I'll refer to them to the black mouse and the white mouse a lot but they have an actual name the black mouse is the selection tool and the white mouse is the direct selection tool and my recommendation is when in when in doubt use the black mouse and if the black mouse does not work then use the white mouse because figuring out when to use each is my personal opinion as my personal opinion is the hardest thing that you will go through in the first few weeks of the semester and so when in doubt, use the black mouse, and if the black mouse does not work, then give the white mouse a try. Um, but as a general definition, the selection tool allows you to make broad changes to something. You want to rotate it, you want to make it bigger, you want to move it across your screen. And the white mouse is going to make fine detail changes. And so let's say that you have a circle. The circle is made up of vector art, which is made up of anchor points and directional lines. With the black mouse, you could move the circle. You could change the color of the circle, you could make the circle bigger, you could rotate the circle. But with the white mouse, you would use that to edit the circle, so you would want to edit the anchor points and directional lines that form the foundation of that circle. You'll also use the type and the type on a path tool, which is on the T that you see here on the left hand side. You don't see the type on a path tool right now because some tools are hidden, and so any tool that has a little black uh, triangle in the bottom right hand corner means there's more. And if you push and hold on it, it'll expand, and in some cases it will show you like four or five more tools. In this case it will just say do you want to use the type tool or the type on a path tool, and I'll demo that in a second. And then the last two tools that you should should be find yourself becoming comfortable with are the shape tool which technically is not called the shape tool in InDesign um, anything that looks like a shape in this case is the rectangle um, it's just called a rectangle and ellipse or a polygon tool but really it's how you make your shapes and then the shape tool that has an X across it is not a shape tool at all it's a graphic frame tool and uh, it looks like I have a typo on my, my slide that I've been using for years. And so this on the left hand side, the one that has the X across it, it's the same exact thing as the rectangle ellipse and polygon tool, but oh it does say frame. Yeah, it's a graphic frame tool. Ignore, ignore my, my tangent. Um, when it has an X across it, what you are saying or you're communicating to whoever you're creating and sharing the file with is that a picture is going to go in that frame. And so what I would like you to start doing is use the actual shape, I have air quotes here, shape tools for creating shapes like circles and stars and hearts and whatever you're going to create. Um, but only use the ones that have the X across it when you're going to put a picture inside. So maybe you've created this picture in Photoshop and you're going to eventually bring it into your project in InDesign. You would make a box for it because everything in InDesign has to go in a box. And in order to do that you'd make a, uh, a graphic frame tool. Uh, I guess, I guess it's just called the frame tool, not the graphic frame tool. Maybe I just say graphic frame because to me it makes more sense when you describe it as being a picture. Okay, let's jump to InDesign and I will show you those five tools. And so if we jump back to our project here, um, I'm going to close, you know what, I'm not going to close out of this. I'm going to delete the pages that I don't need and then I'm going to reformat this to look more like what your project should look like. And so if we go to File, Document, Setup, we can change the page to be 7 inches by 9 inches. I'm going to leave the margins where they're at. And then now I can take a look. Let's reset our workspace, Window, Workspace, Reset Typography. Now I can take a look at that Tools panel. Eventually we'll get there. And we can start to play around with those different tools. And so the first tool is the selection tool, and then the white mouse or cursor is the direct selection tool. I can't show you how to use those until we have things in the workspace. And so the first thing that I want to do is I want to use the type tool. If you push and hold on the type tool, you'll have the type and the type on a path tool. For now, just use the type tool. And then you should always have this mindset that everything in InDesign has to go in a box. And so in other graphic arts programs, you can just click and if you click you can add text but you'll see if you just click nothing happens you have to make a box and so if I think that I want to 
make a header for something that I'm working on that goes across the whole page. I would have to make the box big enough for whatever I'm going to type. And then what I do is always make it bigger than I think I need it because you can always go back and make it smaller. And so for your project, you're going to divide the workspace into nine cells so that you can add a fun fact. And so you might want to add your box, the entire width or the entire area of your cell that you're creating within. Once you create a graphic, or I'm sorry, uh, a text box, you can add some text to it. My name is Jessica. And then you can start to play around with that text. Uh, the text can be played around with using panels. And so if you go over to your, uh, your typography workspace and you look at the panels that are open, let's move these over so they're easier to see, um, you can see that there's a paragraph panel and a character panel. If you open them, you can use these two panels to take a look at the different things that you might want to adjust. But what I really like about your control bar at the top of the screen is that when you have your text cursor selected, so you have your type tool selected, the control bar changes to have all these different settings. And so this A represents the character panel settings. So you can come through and you can change the, the typeface that you're using or the font family. You can change the size of the text. Uh, we haven't learned about letting yet, but you could adjust the letting, which is the spacing between lines of type. You make it 30 there. You can come across and you can kind of just play around and that's really what I want you to do for the first couple weeks of the semester. I don't want to go through every single one of these and explain exactly what it does. I want you to click and try to see what it does by, by also meeting the minimum requirements of the project. And so there's going to be no requirement on the project that you have to adjust the horizontal scale of your text. But if you highlight your text and you increase this, you can try to kind of see what happens when you do that. I'm going to set it back at 100. And I would like you to kind of click and play around. If you switch on your control bar to the second option, which is this is a little paragraph icon. If you click on that, now you get paragraph options. And so you can left, right, and center alignment. These are common icons that you should be familiar with from like Microsoft Word or the internet and things like that. And you can kind of click through and you can experiment with these different paragraph options as well. The other two tools that we talked about in the slideshow were these two tools right here. You have the frame tool, or the gra what I call the graphic frame tool, and then you have just the shape tool, which isn't called a shape tool, but it's the rectangle tool. And any, any tool on the tools panel that has a little black triangle, you can push and hold on that, and you can see that there's more options than are available. And so here I could make a rectangle, which is a four-sided polygon. Um, if you hold shift, you can make a square. You can change it to be an ellipse, which is how you make your circles or your ovals, and then you can make polygons. And so when you select that tool and you click and drag, remember everything has to go in a box, and so this becomes the box. You can create shapes. Now the shape has no fill color, but it has a black stroke on the outside, and so you'll be able to start working with that. If you push and hold, you can make an ellipse. I held shift and it made it into a circle. And then if you choose the polygon tool, this one's pretty cool, you can click and drag and it makes a shape that has um, any number of different sides. But what's super cool about the polygon tool is that instead of clicking and dragging, if you just click, a dialog box will appear and you can make more decisions about what that should be. Maybe I don't want to make a star, maybe I want to make a pentagon. And so I could make a 3 inch by 3 inch 5 sided pentagon that has zero star inset. So when it has a star inset, it's what makes it look like a star. And so if you have zero, it's just a polygon. And so now I could make the shapes that I want to use. So now that we have some shapes to play around with, um, we can experiment with the white and the black mouse. The black mouse is the selection tool, the white mouse is the direct selection tool. You'll notice that I have not created anything with this frame tool. We haven't learned how to use pictures yet, and so I don't want you to use any pictures in any of your projects in Art 1200 until you learn the proper way to format them. And so you'll see that the rectangle, the ellipse, and the polygon frame tool, they work the same exact way as the shape tools, and they kind of give you the same result, but they'll always have an X across. I would like you not to even kind of touch them or use them until you learn how to format pictures properly. So now that we have some shapes and we have some text, we can go about making some edits to them. And when you need to edit something, you, you can't always do it with the tool that you created it with. And so I created this 
po pentagon over here using the polygon tool. And so if I select the polygon tool and I try to like click on the pentagon, I'm just going to make another pentagon and I will never be able to edit it. And so you need to get into the habit of always switching to your white and to your black mouse. And my rule is when in doubt use the black mouse and if the black mouse doesn't work then you can use the white mouse. And so if I wanted to move or rotate this I would grab the white mouse. Notice how I'm getting really close to the black line here. Um, one of the things about the selection tool is it will only select things and so if your shape has no fill color to it, to InDesign doesn't exist. This is, a, this is the outline of a pentagon. It's not a pentagon in the middle, it's the outline of it. And so if I wanted to move it, I can't really move it with my black mouse, but if you hover closely, you can click on the edge and then you can move it around. Before we get any further with some basic editing of the shape, um, you're probably, if you haven't already kind of said it out loud, wondering what the blue lines are. And so when you have a shape that looks like this, and we see the blue line that's going through the border, uh, that is called a frame edge, and it's basically telling you where your shape is. And so if I go back and I create that graphic frame, Graphic frames have no fill color and no stroke to them by default. And so if I created this pentagon here and I didn't have any fill or stroke to it, I wouldn't be able to see where it's at. And so InDesign shows me the blue outline um, to show me where my things are at. And so my, my pentagon, it has that blue line, but the blue line's not actually there. If we look at our workspace here, you can see that there's blue lines on every shape. Some of them are bigger in rectangles, some are on the outside, etc. If I put the project into what's called presentation mode, if you push and hold um, at the bottom of your tools panel, uh, if you push and hold the very last icon, you can put it into presentation mode. This gives you an accurate representation of what is actually going to print. And you can see that I just have black lines for my projects. There's actually not any blue. It's, it's a non-printing guide. And so you're going to have your frame edges around the outside of your shape, but you're also going to have them in a rectangular box that sometimes is bigger than your shape if your shape is not a rectangle. And so when I select the pentagon, I'm getting the blue box on the outside. Um, everything has to go in a box. That is, that is the box for the pentagon. Your white mouse can be used to make fine-tune adjustments. And so if you select your white mouse and we try to edit that same pentagon, I won't be able to click it and drag it and move it as like a shape, but if I select it, you then can see that you have little white squares in the corners. Those are the anchor points that create the vector art shape that form the pentagon. And so with the white mouse, I could make, let's zoom in a little bit, I could make some adjustments to what the pentagon looks like. Maybe I want this top anchor point, see how it's blue now, it's selected. If I drag it down, I can maybe make it inverted. Maybe I'm trying to make a little cup for my project. I gotta stop zooming in so far. Uh, and now I could modify that. There we go. I can modify that so I'm trying to make the shape of the cup for my project. Most of the times though you're going to be using the black mouse and so let's say that I wanted this to be a red cup. Um, if you select it, if you click the little black line or you kind of click and drag and you highlight your shape, you can use the very, um, I wouldn't say the very last two, but the last two actual tools on your tools panel. They're not tools, they're methods for selecting color. Um, you can select the fill and the stroke color of your shape. And so right now I have a white box with a red line across it and I have a black kind of outline. The white box with the red line across it represents the fill or the interior color of a shape and the black line represents the outside border color and so right now you can see that I have a black border, right, it's black, and I have nothing in the inside and so the white with the red line represents you have no fill. If you double click either of these it will open a color picker dialog box and so I double click the fill color so I could change it to green or I could make it red and as soon as I hit OK, it will change the fill color of that shape to be red. If I do not want the black border, I could double click black and I could change the color. Maybe I want it to be dark red. And then I could change the border color to be, you can't really see it, but now it's dark red. Um, the last thing that I want to show you in this video is how to modify the text. And so the text is the one that's a little bit um, funky, doesn't really abide by the rules that I've given you. And so the box, the text, you have text and you have, you have 
text and then you have text inside a box. And so you can edit the box or you can edit the text. And so if we tried to edit the box, the text is in similarly to the way that we edited this little cup that we made. If you select the frame that the text is in, you can do just what we did. We can double click on the fill color. We can choose red as the fill color. You can double click on the stroke color. You can choose, I don't know, bright orange as a stroke color. And you can make adjustments that way. But if you want to modify the actual text, you have to highlight it. So you have to go back to your type tool click inside the box and then click and drag to highlight and now the same colors that we just modified they have a T inside and so they're still representing the same thing they're representing on the left the fill color of the stroke and on the right the outline or the stroke color and so if we double click on the T we can change the color maybe we want it to be bright yellow we zoom out the text is now bright yellow if you wanted to it's probably not a good idea but if you wanted to you could also double click on the stroke color I mean, it will be bright green, and you can add a stroke to the outside of the text. I would like you to experiment with creating different shapes and different text boxes. Modify the text, change the typeface, and play around with the character panel and paragraph panel settings. And I would like you to start to experiment with the color. And when you feel a little bit more confident, you can move on to the next video, and we'll continue with this lecture.